All right, Canada is finally ready to retire the old Victoria-class submarine. Those things have been around so long, they could probably write a memoir about the Cold War. They are set to be fully retired by the mid-2000s, 30s, and we need a replacement. The program is the Canadian Patrol Submarine Project, CPSP. The goal? To acquire up to 12 new, conventionally powered boats that can operate in the Pacific, the Atlantic, and, crucially, under the Arctic ice. This is a massive, multi-billion dollar decision that will define our Navy for the next 50 years. The field is now down to two certified heavyweights, the KSS-3 Batch 2 from Hanwha Ocean of South Korea and the Type 2 12CD from Thyssen Krupp Marine Systems, TKMS of Germany. Let's dive into the details. The KSS-3, or Dosen An Changho class, is the big boat in this race. It measures about 89 meters long and displaces around 3,600 tons submerged. This is a large, blue water capable platform. It uses a highly advanced hybrid propulsion system, coupling a diesel electric motor with air independent propulsion AIP fuel cells and integrating high density lithium ion batteries. This gives it a major energy boost, allowing it to sustain higher underwater speeds and stay submerged for over three weeks without having to surface to recharge. Now for the punch, the KSS-3 is designed for serious long-range striking power. It has six 533mm torpedo tubes for heavy torpedoes and anti-ship missiles. Crucially, the Batch 2 variant offered to Canada features up to 10 vertical launch system VLS cells. This is the game changer. These VLS cells are the key maritime component of their three-axis retaliation strategy. They are designed to carry weapons like the Hyun Mu 4-4 submarine-launched ballistic missile. This is not a nuclear weapon. It's designed to carry a one-ton conventional warhead with a range rumored to be up to 800 kilometers. This kind of sheer explosive power is intended to be used as a ground-penetrating weapon, able to destroy deep, hardened underground facilities an absolute monster of a capability. Alternatively, this VLS capacity could be used to launch an entire salvo of supersonic Haesong-4 anti-ship cruise missiles, or the Hyunmu-3 Cheonryong long-range cruise missile, an absolutely nasty prospect for any adversary. The flexibility of having 10 dedicated VLS cells means the KSS-3 can be adapted for strategic land attack maximum anti-ship saturation, or future weapon systems. Next up is the German-Norwegian Type 212 CD common design. This is the stealth fighter of the sea. It's smaller, about 73 meters long, and around 2,800 tons submerged. Its signature feature is the diamond-shaped hull. This isn't just for aesthetics, it's a revolutionary design intended to actively deflect incoming sonar pings, significantly reducing its detectability. A true underwater ninja. It's built for the shallow, complex, and high-threat waters of the European High North experience that transfers perfectly to our Arctic and coastal operations. It uses an advanced fuel cell AIP system for an exceptionally quiet underwater endurance. German and Norwegian Type 212. A submarines are known to stay submerged for up to 18 days at a time without snorkeling. The larger 212 CD is expected to exceed this figure. The 212 CD is primarily a silent hunter. It also has six 533 millimeter torpedo tubes. However, it does not have a dedicated VLS. All missiles, whether anti-ship or land attack must be launched through the torpedo tubes. This reduces the number of heavyweight torpedoes it can carry and its rapid fire capability compared to a VLS equipped boat. For long range strike, they are considering the submarine launched Naval Strike Missile, NSMSL, a torpedo tube launched weapon that offers high precision anti-ship and land attack capability, aligning with NATO standards. 
This is more than a sub-purchase. It's a choice between two distinct military doctrine and two very different visions for the future of the Canadian defense industry. Let me know down in the comments section below about your choice.